Let's look at generalizations of this idea. So far we only considered regression problems, so you may be wondering what happens with the classification. In this case we can still write decompositions, but they are a little bit more difficult to compute. For example, for regression we can just take the average of models for our purposes, but for classification we need to refer to voting, and this makes things a little bit more complicated. Here's a nice paper for that, if you're interested you can check this out. But overall we will follow a similar idea, for example we will look at observed values, true values, predictions of the votes of many models, and the predictions of one model, and then we will take a look at these decompositions. Let's talk about one more interesting thing, randomized algorithms. In this case, it's quite interesting to consider what happens when we have some randomized algorithms in this process. With this, we, we are going to introduce some additional randomness. We can call this with R. Let's follow through this variance term and decompose it into these two terms. We are here using this mathematical trick. And we can write it as the expected value of this variance plus variance of this expected value here. The first term here is the average variance due to the added randomness. And the second term is the variance due to the data set. So let's continue. Why is this important? Assume we are training m such random models and we make them vote, or we just take the average of those models. In this case, the noise doesn't change because it just doesn't depend on anything. The bias doesn't change because when we take this 1 over m and this summation, when we do the mathematics, this 1 over m goes out. We have the expectation of the summations, and overall, we end up with the same expected value. So it doesn't change. And the variance due to the data set doesn't change because this expected value doesn't change. But the variance due to the added randomness is quite interesting in this case. So if you put that term here and go through the derivation, you can see that we have this 1 over m times this expected value. In this case, if m is large enough, we can see that this becomes a quite small number and can even go to 0 for m is very, very large. In this case, we can see that this variance due to the other randomness can just go away when we have multiple of these random models in this process. And these things also depend on how we insert randomness because the way that we insert randomness may also help us with the overfitting. So we may take away the ability to overfit. And if that's the case, actually, we can also reduce the variance due to the data set. So this is really nice, because if that happens, uh, in this case we can reduce the overall variance, and if we are not increasing the bias in this case, it means that we have improved. So this is the general idea behind assembling. With the assembling, we can reduce the overall variance, and even if we increase the bias a little bit, in this case if the, re if the reduction is more, in this case we have more improved models. And this will be the key idea behind ensembling.